Hello, I'm Lynn Maynard and I'm partnering with Pencil as we are a partner of Pencil and we support our McGavick High School. We have a wonderful academy, hospitality and culinary program there. And we also support Two Rivers Middle School and do a lot of reading and volunteering there as well. Today, I thought I would teach a quick topic that we use at Opryland. I'm the director of learning over at Opryland Hotel. And I thought I'd share with you all a little bit about the brain and our emotional uh, intelligence. Because we all do have one, even though sometimes we don't act like we do. And it all begins with the brain. Obviously today, there's a lot of anxiety, stress, emotions, uh, and concern out there. And one way that we can learn to use our emotional intelligence better is to learn how to use our brain better. We have this incredible brain in our head and we start to do a lot more things with it if we understood the road, the road rules of our brain. So our brain, I thought I would share with you some facts about our brain, the brain parts, and how to access those brain parts to get back in control. Because not only do we have an IQ, but we really do have an emotional intelligence. And that is something that is very important in the workforce as well. You bring great competencies into the workforce, but we do need to know how to manage our emotions so that we stay in control and get to the other side of fear and anxiety so that we can be productive. You guys up for it? You ready to put your brains to work? Okay, let's begin. Talk about the brain parts for a moment. Uh, our brain rules. Just like we have, like I said, the brain rules, there's also if we drive a car, we have navigational uh, road rules that we use, right? When we drive a car, we want to follow the road rules. What are some road rules? Stopping at the traffic light, stopping at a stop sign, yielding for people. Um, and by following the road rules, we get to where we need to get in a productive, safe manner. And that's the same thing I'm talking about with our emotions. We can navigate our emotions by following some brain rules. But I thought it would be good first to talk about a little bit about some of our brain facts. We have this incredible organ in our head, and yet we, it does so much for us, but we don't really know a lot about that. So I'm gonna break it down into a couple simple things that we should know about our brain. We're not gonna do brain surgery right now. That's boy, boy for a later date on that one. But some facts about our brain. First of all, it's a three pound organ that's sitting up in our heads right now. <laughs> uh, it creates awareness. It's allowing you to do the thinking right now. As you listen to me, you're thinking and you're talking to yourself. That's awareness. It also assists with our survival and learning operations. Our brain is wired to keep us safe at all times. And when we don't feel safe, it will take over and make us safe again. But we can do some things to help it. Anything we can do to help it makes us navigate smoother in that process. It also helps us to learn. This brain is an incredible pattern-seeking um, and organizing system. For instance, 11, pieces of 11 billion pieces of information come through our heads any moment. We're only conscious to about 40 of those. Wow, that's a lot. 11 million pieces of information coming through our head in one minute and we're conscious to 40. Let's put those 40 conscious thoughts to good use in that process. But what's it doing with the other 11 million? Well, it's storing it. It's keeping up with data. It's noticing the sun. It's picking up smell. I like that. I don't like that. It stores that for a later use for your survival. All right, so it's a great pattern-seeking filing cabinet system, our brain. It's also a gray wrinkly matter. When you think about the gray wrinkly matter, it's like a newspaper, just like I'm showing my brain, and it has lots of little grooves in here, okay? My brain happens to be orange. Our brains really aren't orange. <laughs> but it, it would be a gray matter around this brain, and these corrugated things, if we were to press that corrugated part of our brain out, it would be about the size of a newspaper. That's incredible, isn't it? All wrinkled up around this brain. Okay? That's what our brain matter is. And it's located in our skull, and we have 22 bones in our skull that protect our brain. It also creates our entire universe, because the way I think and feel, it's creating for me. And that's who I am in that process. But the brain also does a lot of unconscious things for us. It's pumping blood through me. It's expanding my lungs. It's making me blink. It makes me sneeze. It does all kinds of things that I don't even know that it's doing. Like it's processing sound and sight and smell and taste. You're processing me right now. That's what this brain is doing. It's an incredible machinery that we have in our head. Now, to make it simpler, ultimately our brain, you are your brain and it makes you who you are. The brain controls all the other organs. It's like the mother control thing, the mother control place or the, 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 the uh, major operational of control. So it controls everything else. It is the mother board of all, of all learning for us. So, what can we learn to help ourselves stay a little safer, 
a little, uh, bring our anxieties down and our emotions because we are in trying times right now. I mean, when's the last time we've all been locked in our homes <laughs> and haven't been at school for this long? There's lots of change and it brings lots of emotions, whether it's anxiety or fear or concern or frustrations. All emotions are valid, but not all behaviors. That's what we want to navigate on this road to a, a better, smoother operation of control. All right, so let's learn about the brain parts. There are three major brain parts in our head. To simplify the brain, again, we're not going to do brain surgery here. I want to simplify what this brain can do for us. When we look at the layers, most people know there's a left brain and a right brain. Left brain is responsible for a lot of logic. You think of left brain, L, logic. A lot of logic comes out of the left side of the brain. The right side, that's where a lot of creativeness comes. Some people are very creative, and that means their right side of the brain is working very much more, it's maybe stronger for them, or they have a preference for the right side of the brain. Left people, left brain people are a little more logical, and they like logical things in that process. But we have these two halves in that. We also have three layers in the brain. Those three layers, to simplify, are our survival brain, which we learned the, the medical term or the... Uh, the, the biology term of that subcortex. We also have an emotional brain, that's the limbic brain. And then we also have a thinking brain, that's our neocortex. And our brain evolved in this order. So survival is important. And if I felt scared right now, this part of my brain would become very active. And these parts kind of start shutting down. So there's anything that can make us feel threatened and so forth. So when we feel that way, we want to, we know that that part of our brain is coming in control. So what I want to do is break these parts down for you so you better understand what they're doing. Um, so our survival brain, that's where we're feeling anxiety or emotions are coming through and we're feeling scared or threatened. We want to protect ourselves. We want to go in or we want to fight. Some people refer to that as fight or flight or we go to silence. We withdraw and stop talking. Have you ever noticed that with people sometimes when they get scared, they withdraw? They pull in and they're not talking as much anymore. They're dealing with that fear on the inside. Some people want to come out fighting it and stand up and punch at it in that process. That's where anger or it gets a little bit more um, aggressive in that behavior. Our brain is wired to do one or the other. We're just wired that way. Now, if we're calm, well then our limbic brain is kicking in and that's more of our emotional brain. That's where we have thoughts and ideas. That's where we're, all that information that's coming into the brain, it's sorting itself and putting it there. It's like many puzzle pieces. It's gathering data for future use in that process. And then our thinking brain, sometimes I refer to that in the, in the working place as our executive brain. That's where our rational brain is, is organizing and putting things together and putting, oh, all those puzzle pieces were making this picture. That's what this is. So the, the executive brain is able to put... Um, all the pieces together and read it and understand it. That's where our logic comes in. That's where we gain wisdom. That's where we get to a conclusion of something in that process. So those are our three brain parts in that process. Let's have some fun now and make the brain, okay? Can you play with me a little bit and make the brain? I'm going to do it first and then you guys can model it with me. Let's hold out our hand like this and then make a fist. See my arm and then a fist. The arm represents your spinal cord, and at the end of the at the top of the spinal cord is your brain. So this brain is sitting right on top of the spinal cord. Okay. Now, where are the three layers? Well, as you hold open the fist, I want you to take your other hand and touch the wrist of your of, of your brain. Where the, where you're touching your wrist, that is where your survival brain is coming in. That's the inner part of that brain. Survival again was referred to as subcortex. Its main and only function is to do what? Keep us alive and surviving, okay? Now, take your other, take your hand off of that. Now, put your, now touch the fist, okay? When you touch the fist, this is your limbic brain, okay? That's the middle of your brain. It's the limbic. What does limbic do again? That's our emotional brain. That's where all of our emotions are coming in and things are chaotic in there. We don't really have a language set there. We just can feel our gut on something. Then take that hand off again and take your other hand and put your hand over the fist. That's your executive brain. That's your uh, neocortex. That's your thinking brain, okay? So let's do that again so we can have the body parts, okay? Once again, lay out your hand. This is your spinal cord. At the very tip of that, where you put your finger on the wrist, that is where your survival brain is. That's the first brain that comes in and keeps us alive. On top of that middle layer is the limbic brain. That's where we touch the fist. 
you're now touching your limbic brain, which is your emotional brain. And then I cover that up, I have the executive brain. That's our three layers. Now, what happens if I get scared or threatened? What might scare me? Um, a tornado, obviously. We had one here in Nashville, and that is very scary. Could be that I have to get up and give a speech in front of students that I can't even see on a video camera like what I'm doing now. That could make me scared. That could be a threat. Or somebody intimidating me. When that happens, what's going to happen is this brain is going to wig out, okay? And if it's wigging out, that means that it's the survival brain is kicking in. Does it need the executive brain right now? Does it need logic? No. So the executive brain comes off. And the limbic brain and the survival brain are wigging out like this. So what we say is we're dummying down. We took the rational brain away because the blood doesn't need to go to the executive brain. It's pushing it into the survival brain. And where does that blood go when it leaves part of the brain? It's pushing where? Into your limbs. Why is it pushing into our limbs? So that bear that's out there, I can outrun it, or I can climb that tree, or I can fight it off. It's giving me power to fight. That's why we have this thing called fight or flight, okay? Now, maybe it's not a bear that's coming to get me, and it's just that I gotta stand in front of a class and give a speech. That really isn't gonna kill me. That isn't gonna hurt me, not really. So what we need to do is dummy down again this brain that's wigging out. We need to calm it. What's the best way to calm this brain down? Ah, we wanna get the executive brain back on top, which will start calming it. How do we get the executive brain to calm down? or to come into play, to calm down the rest of the brain. Ah, the executive brain likes good questions. It wants you to ask a question. It wants you to start thinking again. It wants to think. And the only way I do is I start asking myself a question. Any question will do. One of the questions that's in my back pocket, just in case I need it when I'm not feeling really safe, is Lynn, what's four times four? My brain immediately has, that executive brain has to kick back in to answer the question. And when it kicks back in, it's calming the other parts of our brain down. So my go-to question every time is, what's four times four? It's 16. So by asking a question, the brain has to think again, and the blood starts coming back into the executive brain and calming us down. So anytime we feel that wigging out, that brain is wigging out. The blood says, I don't need it to do quantum physics right now. I need it to be safe. So it pushes us into fight or flight. Are there some things that we can do to calm ourselves down? Yes. We are in control, we can navigate. We don't need to feed the fears, just like we don't need to feed the bears, right? Don't feed your fears. Step out for a moment and start asking your questions. What could I learn about this? How can I ask a simple question to get that power back up? We wanna power it back up and make ourselves back in control. So we wanna uh, put that reptilian brain I have my reptile because my reptilian brain is right here at the survival. I don't need you, little reptilian brain. I want to put you back in place, and I want to get back in control. All right? Can we make sure that we don't let our fears take control of us? Because we can use the road rules. We can use our brain rules to get back in touch. All right. I want you to practice making your brains and then use this activity when you're thinking about when other people are back in control or out of control, you can do it with them. Just start asking them questions. It gets them out of that space and gets that blood pumping back up. All right, you got a great brain, put it to good use. We all need a little emotional intelligence around here. That was a simple technique. Thank you for letting me share a little bit about what we do at Opryland to help people feel safe again about life and about uh, standing up and making a presentation or whatever that is. Use your brains. You got one.